Well, it's a wonderful life. I don't know how that sits with you, that phrase, it's a wonderful life. Sometimes I think we can forget the beauty in the lives that we live, especially when tragedy hits, especially when we go through something traumatic or when we are too focused with worldly goals or achievements, when we have lost our way in life. Is it still a wonderful life? Do we still have purpose when we have lost our way? Can our lives still be redeemed when we have forgotten the goodness of God, the goodness of relationships, the goodness of love? We have arrived at our last message in the series that we've been in, Christmas at the Movies. And this movie is a classic. I have already given you a couple hints you should know by now. It's a wonderful life. And I have really good news today. It truly is a wonderful life. And I am praying today is a reminder for you that it is because perhaps right now in your life, it may not feel like it. Would you pray with me? Then we'll continue. Awesome God. God, thank you for who you are. God, thank you that we get to be in this space online And uh, God, I just pray that you would uh, give us open hearts today, open minds, open ears, open hands to what you have to tell us. God, that your scripture would bring us truth and bring us life today. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Amen. If you are familiar with this movie, movie, you are either, uh, you love the classics or you're over the age of 60. So shout out to all the boomers watching this message, wherever you may be in your living room, at home, or maybe you're out and about uh, this weekend. I would love to show you a clip of the very beginning of this movie, and this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be walking through this movie together, and then we're going to hear about what God has to say. Now, this movie is heartfelt, uh, but it's also a comedy. George Bailey is the main character, and he represents every single one of us. Now there's an angel that gets sent down to help George at the end of the movie, but the beginning starts out by these angels having a conversation with God, and they're talking, which is really funny. Again, this isn't biblical, so don't get, uh, don't get worried about that. It's just supposed to be funny um, of this conversation. They introduce George Bailey to all of us, so go ahead and check this out. George was contemplating life itself and truly wishing he was never born. This is when the angels revisit the story and the angel Clarence, who jumps into the water, he does it to distract George and make him not jump in to take his own life, but to save another's. Little did he know it was his guardian angel. George spends a little bit of time with his new friend who he doesn't believe uh, is an angel until George says to him, I wish I was never born. He tells this to Clarence. And the angel Clarence decides, you know what, this may actually be a really good idea for George. So it happens. George starts to discover his world is different because he doesn't even exist in it. He starts panicking. Potter took over the town and turned it into a casino and bar lifestyle. A friend of George's was rejected by the town because George wasn't there to intercede on his behalf. And so much more happened without George in the world. Check this out. George wanted to do all these amazing things and travel and have purpose in his life, but he didn't realize all along he was living out the most purpose he ever had with his family, with his brother, his uncle, the business, even Potter, his friends. We have one last clip to show you, and then we'll move on. Check this out. It's a wonderful 
life. George's life mattered. Your life matters. You have purpose. You were created to be here in this very moment. Your life has significance. You know why? Because you were made in the image of God. Most, if not all, people in scripture that do these amazing and beautiful things that we love to retell were not looking for purpose. They were not looking for meaning. You know what they were? They were open and they were receptive to God's call. To name a few, and it is just a few because there are so many people in the Bible, David, Rahab, Ruth, Paul, They were minding their own business, living out their life, but they were receptive when God called on them. I'm going to take you down memory lane here. David, a lowly shepherd, defeated Goliath and then faced 10 years of persecution and took the throne after King Saul's death. He was known to be someone after God's own heart. God doesn't care about status, goals, achievements. He cares about people being after his own heart. Rahab. Rahab was a prostitute. She had no idea who God was before the Israelites attacked her town. But in the process of helping them, she declared her faith in God. And God worked through her to fulfill his promise to the Israelites. And Rahab was literally a part of the lineage of Jesus. Without Rahab, no Jesus. She was a prostitute. Let this be a reminder that God can call any of us to accomplish his purposes. Ruth, I love this one because this is so ordinary. Ruth authentically lived out her identity to a new land with her mother-in-law. And because of that, the lineage of Jesus was continued through her and her new husband, God wants us to live authentic lives that are not following things that are going to get us status or recognition, but lives that are genuine and real and honest. The Apostle Paul, known as Saul before he met Jesus, hated the new Christian faith so strongly that he sent for the arrest and execution of Christians. But after Paul met Jesus on the road to to Damascus and was blinded, Ananias helped confirm Paul's new calling to Jesus, and Paul became the most famous apostle of all time. He wrote most of the New Testament. And like Rahab, God can and will call anyone to accomplish his purpose. Why? Because we were made in the image of God because we have value, because we were made to have purpose, because we matter to the kingdom of God, because we matter to this world. George Bailey was looking for his life to have meaning. And when it didn't pan out the way he thought it would, he lost vision of the beauty and the purpose that he was already living out. We can work so hard so hard to try and have purpose or meaning or achievements or goals or fill in the blank that we miss the true purpose God has for us. Matthew 5 is the beginning of one of the most important and popular messages, if not the most important message that Jesus has ever given, the Sermon on the Mount. It's my favorite. In Matthew 5, 3, it starts out with something called the Beatitudes, It means the blessings. It's essentially Jesus giving the believer attitudes in which we should be. Did you catch that? Attitudes in which we should be. Be attitudes. All these character traits are goals of all Christians. We have a responsibility to desire and work towards these spiritual attributes. Because this is where we find true meaning and purpose in a life that is living for and with Jesus. Let's read them together. Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. 
Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How many times have we worked so hard on goals or achievements in our lives that are not going to give us a reason for living? Jesus literally laid it all out for us on where we can find purpose and meaning and value. The kingdom of God is not interested in your worldly possessions or your worldly goals or your worldly achievements. It's quite the opposite, actually. It's more interested in what you give. It's more interested in your generosity. It's also not how more people are welcomed in, either. It's about the peacemakers, those that learn how to mourn, the merciful, the poor in spirit. These are the things that enrich our life with love and grace and goodness and meaning. If we treat these beatitudes as goals and achievements that we are working towards, church scripture promises us it is a life worth living. And today, if life hasn't been that wonderful and you are struggling, Jesus says you are blessed if you are poor in spirit. If you are in a season of mourning, if you have been meek, if you have hungered and thirsted for righteousness, blessed are you. A life living out the Beatitudes is the kind of life that touches so many other lives in the name of Jesus. Clarence, the angel, said, strange, isn't it? Each man's life touches so many other lives. When he isn't around, he leaves an awful hole, doesn't he? I want you to close your eyes for a second, wherever you are, whether you're sitting down in your homes, you're listening, if you're in your car driving, please do not close your eyes. But wherever you are, Close your eyes and just picture someone in your mind that has had a huge impact on your life or currently still does. Or maybe someone that you have lost that had a huge impact on your life or still currently does. Imagine that person. Now imagine them gone. Imagine that They never existed. How different would your life be? Church, when you intentionally stop to talk to someone living in homelessness, when you intentionally love beyond a family member that's really hard to love, when you are intentionally generous and buy someone a meal, when you call a friend that you haven't talked to in a long time, when you decide to forgive the unforgivable and find peace in the tragedies of your life, God uses you in the ordinary and makes life extraordinary. God makes us extraordinary. The thing is, we just need to open our eyes and see it. Your life is of value. You make an impact in the lives of people around you by just choosing to follow Jesus in the way that he loved people. Church, this life is a wonderful life because of the purpose we have in living like and living for Jesus. Let's pray. God, thank you for meeting us where we're at. Whatever we may be going through, whether we are worried for another year ahead of us in 2024, whether we are in a season of reflecting on what's happened this past year, God, may we always remember that it is indeed a wonderful life. 
because you have created us with purpose and with meaning and with value. God, you wrote it all out for us of what it means to live a purposeful life. And just the ordinary, God, and just the ordinary. Also knowing that it's not ordinary, God, because you make us extraordinary. Because we are made in the image of you. Let us never forget that today. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your truth. We love you so much. In your name we pray. Everyone said, amen.